Hi guys, me, Harry and Jess here. 25 songs have now um, been officially announced for the final yeah. and the running order is out, so I think it is best to talk about it of day course. before the final. So let's kick things off. Opener, Czech Republic. Yeah. Uh, it, to me, this is an obvious choice for opening because the song is so high energy. It's such a, an upbeat kind of pop dance track and the lighting that we get is phenomenal and for me this is really going to get the show off to a great start so I'm, I'm not surprised at all. Yeah I completely agree I think when it was announced to be first half it seemed quite obvious that it was going to open. Mm -hmm. They do have this trend of um, the, se the closer of semi-final two then does open the show it's yeah. happened quite a few years now I think it'll be a great opener. I think Czech Republic has got amazing staging. One thing I am worried about though is a lot of songs in slot one do tend to be on the right hand side of the leaderboard they don't necessarily get as high as they can i think that's to do with uh, lack of televote uh, support mm -hmm. hopefully that doesn't happen to czech republic because i think they've got a great entry this year yeah. so we go from one to the slot of death sadly that is occupied yeah. by romania yeah um this is a surprising choice for me i didn't think a song like this would would be in second place i mean looking at previous years it tends to be more like a ballad or in in, in some cases but I think this is going to possibly harm his chances to do to get a, a good position in the final just purely because he's in second place. It does seem weird they've got two kind of up-tempo songs back-to-back -back opening. I mean, whilst it's good to have such high energy at the beginning, it's for me a bit of an odd choice. I'm not sure how I feel about this. It's, it's certainly not the best welcome back present <laughs> for the final for Romania. Yeah, I mean, I think overall this year they've been uh, experimenting a bit with what songs they can put in slot two. Definitely they've sort of gone more back to back in style mm -hmm. uh, with the upbeat, uh, high eight tempo songs. I, I wouldn't necessarily have done it for the final this year just because yeah. I think there's a lot of ballads mm -hmm. uh, and you would have had to maybe spread out a few more of those upbeat dance songs. Um, I, I think in some ways I can see I can see why Romania mm -hmm. might have been in there just from the sense of I don't think they necessarily were the highest in the semi-final yeah. uh, and this sort of confirms it. Um, but I, I think it, it, one thing I will say about Slot 2 is as much as it's called the Slot of Death, it never wins. They, slot 2 rarely comes last. Yeah. Uh, so while it, while it might struggle now to get top 20, hopefully you know it, it won't come 25th so let's go to the other end of the spectrum yeah. now and we have maybe potentially a surprise closer in Estonia yeah for me this was a complete shock I mean so I understand that it's the, uh, kind of like an up-tempo song and it's got a good message of hope uh, behind it pun intended but the, like the style of the song just seems like a, a weird closer to me I would never have imagined this style of song closing the show like it's like personally, I would have maybe put Serbia as the closer instead and swapped them around. But um, I mean, I'm not mad. I'm just confused. <laughs> <laughs> not mad, but confused. <laughs> Everyone's thoughts on uh, Eurovision, I think, this year. Um, listen, I, I actually, it's Estonia closing is actually one of those where I didn't have it down as a closer before, yeah. but now it's in there. I can totally see why. It's a very anthemic song, very empowering, uh, and you know, while it's maybe not that typical, like. Uh, dance up beat song like maybe uh, Spain in 2019 mm -hmm. uh, I can certainly see uh, it ending on a great note it's mm -hmm. um, it's almost similar to Armenia for me where it's not necessarily the most upbeat song but the fact it's got such a, an anthemic powerful yeah. end I, it's why I think it could be closing mm -hmm. also I think the EBU maybe it's just because of the change from Jean Alessandre to Martin they seem to be putting a lot more of these semi-final qualifiers as the closer they did it with San Marino yeah. last year uh, and they're doing it with Estonia this year whether you know, that's just to do with the fact that the UK is the only member of the Big Five in the second half, yeah. um, which is why they didn't close with it. But I, I don't hate this. Um, I do. Weirdly enough, though, the closer doesn't necessarily, again, do as well as we might think, yeah. like San Marino last year, Spain, the year, not the year before, 2019. So I do hope, uh, similar to Romania, this doesn't hurt Stefan's chances, because I think he's got a, a great song. And, um, mm. you know, he, he does the, as well as he can with the staging. So let's go, <laughs> again, some similar to before we went one and two let's go 25 24 yep. you talked about serbia yeah you wanted it to close it's almost there <laughs> well yeah it almost is i mean i think this is a great slot for contractor personally um i can't remember off the top of my head if the, the penultimate song normally does well but i think if it doesn't serbia could be the one to break that this year um, and I think when you look at, you know, Estonia coming after it and what's coming before it, it's, which I think is Poland, um, it's kind of a great slot in between those two songs. 
Yeah, I mean, you were saying about the second to last song uh, doing well. I've got two facts that might help uh, help okay. your nerves if you've got Serbia. Uh, un, un, 2018, 2017, la, second to last song came runner up. Okay. And in 2019, Kate Miller Heike was the winner of semi final one. She uh -huh. came in second to last. Let's ignore two, say, from last year <laughs> for this stat. And also, 24 is actually the best uh, song from the last 10 years, uh, slot, sorry, from the last 10 years. Wow. Manaskin won from it last year. Obviously, there's a little caveat with that. Uh, only 25 songs this year compared mm -hmm. to 26. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's, these are some good stats for Serbia. Me, personally, um, I, I never saw it as a show closer like mm -hmm. Jess. Um, and uh, just because it would seem quite polarizing. And that's partly why I'm a little bit surprised it's uh, this late on. Uh, it, it, this does have a lot of support. This does have a lot of, you know, um, negative. Love. A lot of love, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it's polarizing. That's what <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for. But um, yeah, it, this definitely ha um, put Serbia in the running for a, a top ten. I would say maybe. Would you say higher? Um, I could see top ten for Serbia. Top ten. Um, but obviously, you mentioned you don't see Ser you, like you're surprised to see Serbia second last. Who would you have put in that place? Ooh, second last. This is going to sound biased. You could have put the UK there. Like if you're going if you're going for if you're going for a potential favorite, which we, that's not a biased take that we are second in the odds and that's not biased like we use they usually do put a potential favorite there then a close with like a, a mid-table song mm -hmm. so you could have put us there it's a hard one because the second yeah. half's it, it's not blessed with quality i don't think <laughs> <laughs> that's going to get some backlash from very ballad heavy, I mean. it's very ballad heavy yeah um we'll get on to that i think i suppose let's talk about some of the favorites yep. sweden slot 20 perfect for Sweden in my opinion and I'm just going to check my notes so Sweden they come after Moldova and before Australia Australia obviously is a is a big song big voice you know great staging but I think Sweden just has something different she's bringing a whole different vibe um, and I think she is really going to stand out because obviously before that we have Moldova which is like high energy kind of you know cheesy traditional pop and this is just like a total different thing and i think the very polarizing entries back to back and i think it's going to work in her favor yeah i mean very polarizing i think people that um are not necessarily keen on the style of song that mo that moldova have or even going the other side with australia if they're not necessarily a fan of the the wacky out of the box costumes uh they're gonna love sweden's positioning here 20 is actually a good number as well it's mm -hmm. the third most successful entry oh. since, um slot since 2010 uh, and yeah, I think wherever Cornelia was going to be put, she was going to do well. Yeah. But um, I think her where she's been put um, next to various other songs, obviously she couldn't she couldn't be right near the end just because that was where she was in the semi-final. Yeah. But I think this is the next best thing. So let's move on to the, another potential favourite, weirdly enough, in yellow and uh, blue <laughs> as well. Ukraine, slot yeah. 12. So I believe they're kind of almost at the end of the first half. I think only Germany... I think is after them. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good slot for them. I mean, I guess it's probably one of the best slots they could get being in the first half. But I think obviously Germany coming after them is more kind of slowed down in comparison to Ukraine. And uh, Czech's notes coming before them. Netherlands, we, I believe. Netherlands. So yeah, great position in between two slower songs. More, it was in the Netherlands case like a ballad. Um, it's going to really stand out amongst those two songs um, and we already know the staging is great they perform great on stage and I I'm not seeing this as a winner but I'm seeing this potentially top five at most yeah a lot of people suggested the fact they're so late in the semi uh, in the first half slot 12 that they might have won semi-final mm -hmm. one I, I mean see that. I mean, Duncan Lawrence uh, was put in slot 12 in 2019 mm -hmm. he went on to win uh, yeah I think we we all um, sort of suggested Ukraine was going to um, have a good number. This is, as I said, it's between, as you said, it's between two ballads. That's really yeah. going to help. It's sort of out of the box, Atlantis style. Uh, and yeah, I think um, if it's going to win, it's in the it's in the slot to do so. Mm -hmm. I wanted to touch actually briefly on that sort of area of, U of Ukraine, because if you go from numbers nine to 12, there's a lot of favorites in there. You've got Italy, mm -hmm. Spain, Netherlands, yeah. Ukraine. I mean, obviously, you know, we can't change where Italy's performing, but to put Spain, like Spain right after Italy is an odd choice just because of how huge they are in this contest. Um, and it, for me, like, obviously, in terms of the style of the song, it works because Brividi is, is a much slower tempo song, more ballad-like compared to Spain. 
but in terms of just their popularity and 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 their potential to win or to do very well it's strange to have them both back to back it's it's going to be a a battle yeah it's going to be a battle i think you're right in the sense that i reckon they've got just gone more for the the style of the song because yeah. yeah it's a ballad next to a you know a high dance song uh, and look they are both ama- uh, they both got immense popularity mm-hmm. but they haven't been in the semi final we don't know and how they exactly. are going to get on so the ebu can't necessarily use um, positions before that I, I do think it's interesting i think they have you know shifted a lot of uh, the first half favorites mm-hmm. near the end they've also put germany there as well but um yeah so it's very it's very almost like songs that you predict to do maybe right hand side early on and then you've got all the yeah. i do feel bad i think out of all of these for netherlands because um going between spain and ukraine you know mm. i see a lot of televote support for both yeah. of those entries and i do worry uh, about um esteen's chances and i'm also a bit gutted because we're one short of being of s10 being in slot 10 I that I'm, i <laughs> it's it's just something very satisfying if they were right should we talk about the uk <laughs> we have to slot 22 in 2022 is it destiny jess <laughs> uh, so like slot 22 out of 25 countries i think is good because we're near the end but we're not too far at the end we're not too early on but then we're also in between Australia and Poland. And obviously these are both big songs, big vocals, kind of power ballads, I guess you could say. And I am worried that we're maybe just gonna kind of blend in because obviously we're a male soloist as are Poland and um, Australia. And I'm wondering if we're gonna be able to stand out enough with that as our na- with those countries as our neighbors. So I'm, ah. I still think we have the potential to do well, but I'm just thinking, could could we have done better had we had different countries around us? Yeah, it's an interesting one, the UK, uh, in terms of their spot. I mean, I've, I don't know if we touched on this, but like, there's as we said, there's so many ballads in the second half that I think we were bound to be at least put between one. Yeah. Um, I think the fact we've been put between two, and not only two, two that are you know amazing vocalists, mm-hmm. that arguably you've put the three biggest yeah. boldest vocalist uh, all back to back to back I, honestly and maybe you can call me biased i don't care i think the uk out of all three of these will stand out the most um mm. just because it's more it's more up tempo yeah. than the other three and also personally i think sam Ryder has the better staging mm-hmm. um which will really help um you know it's one of those uh, look i'm i'm an optimist but i'm cautious with the uk yeah. i will i will believe it when i see it when we get a good result <laughs> But yeah, slot 22 out of 25, it's one of our better running orders in recent years. Uh, and who knows? You know, we might we might do well, we might not. Let's hope for the latter. Uh, yeah. No, the former, the former. I said for... <laughs> God, it's likely to be the latter now, God. Uh, right, so I'm, I'll ask two general questions now. Is there any other song that you see in this running order that when you look at it, you think it's done well in the semi-final or that, or you look, or you go, oh, that's a good running order? Um, I will have to check my notes again, enough. yeah, because, you know, I can't remember 25 countries. Oh, so. Come on, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have the, you know, statistic brain like you I'm do. being sarcastic, I can't remember. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess kind of Portugal being in third place, maybe they didn't do so well in the semi. I mean, I had this down as a potential jury winner in the semi-final. But being third place, I mean, I guess it makes sense coming after um, the Czech Republic and Romania to up tempos and then followed by Finland. So it's a nice contrast. But I would have personally liked to see it later on. And I'm wondering why they're so early on. Is it, like you said before, just because of the style of the song or is there like a deeper meaning to it? Um, That's, yeah. And then having France and Norway back to back, two up very up tempos. I know they're two completely different styles, but for me it's still strange to see that when there are other songs that could have gone one after the other yeah i think both of those um for how maybe you'd say um semi-finalists that maybe haven't done as well yeah. uh portugal was I, I think personally I, I i potentially saw portugal going early maybe even slot two nothing to do with the song yeah. quality but the, just the song style uh i do worry about it though because as much as uh songs early on uh that about 
that a ballad can do well. Portugal is quite calm, quite soothing. It's it puts you in in, in a unique mood, yeah. and I worry that um, it will lose its appeal with the the public mm -hmm. um, being so early yeah. in there. It will stand out though amongst uh, Finland, Czech Republic, and Romania. And yeah, it is a fascinating one. Um, France and Norway. They are different styles, but they're very quirky. They're very out yeah. of the box. Uh, in a way, I almost would have um, put Armenia between the two of them. You could swap Norway and that Armenia. It would have made sense. It would have made I sense. I, we always look at this with hindsight <laughs> and go, yes, that would have made sense. Uh, yeah, so we've, we, we've touched on two that maybe didn't, based on the running order, didn't have the best semi final. Mm -hmm. Is there any that you do think maybe had a good semi final based on the running order? Um, I mean, I guess probably Serbia because they're second to last. And I guess Australia and Poland probably did well. Sweden, of course, I think would have done well in the semi. Yeah. I can't believe you're saying Australia and Poland did well. They're right next to the UK. Yeah. <laughs> They're just. Uh, I'm going to actually say I think Greece did well based on their running order. You, they, I mean, they're slot 17. Uh, if you look at the two songs either side of them, so you've got... Uh, I had this in my head before. It's Iceland and Moldova after them. And I believe it's yeah. Azerbaijan and Lithuania before. Oh, Belgium. Belgium. Okay. Uh, same thing. It's it's, it's, it's it's thank you. Uh, to be honest, it's the same point. Uh, it's it, it's t it's four songs, but I think if you look, if you were to say predict them, obviously we don't know how all these yeah. songs did, but I would guess that they were quite low down on their okay. their semi-finals. So you put Greece in between them. You don't put them near the end where we think a lot of the end songs mm -hmm. did quite well. Greece sort of stands out by itself. I think also. Um, obviously gender doesn't play a massive part but it's a female ballad yeah. uh, in a swarm of male ballads which will help it stand out uh, and yeah I, I think Greece did very well in the semi-final uh, because of because of this running order and I think I, I actually don't think top five's out of the cards for Greece me neither I mean after seeing all of her performances so far easily one of the best vocalists quite a striking staging with all the props that she has um, juries are going to love this so Jess, overall, we've, we've touched on a few songs, obviously there's many more, we have not got time to go for all of them. What are your overall thoughts on the running order? Do you like it? Is um, it not to your taste? I think it's good. Um, I think it's, you know, a fair running order for the most part. Still worried about the UK in this sea of male ballads, but, you know, like you said, we have a great staging that's going to stand out. But overall, I'm happy with it. I think it's, it's good and I can't wait to actually hear the songs, like one after the other, to properly gauge how it's going to be yeah i mean i think uh, i think uh, the broadcaster uh, did as best as they could because mm -hmm. they were dealt a rough hand with um what songs got drawn where like for example with semi-final two only three songs could have gone in the it's first half and they were the three most up-tempo songs that qualified <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i do find it weird I, I when i look at this order and i predict um where all the songs came in the semi-final a lot of the favorites are near the ends of the the halves mm -hmm. so that either means they have just put them near the end or even a surprise one did quite well like yeah. who knows lithuania might have come top five uh, uh, yeah, I mean, who, who knows? Um, but yeah, I think like you say, I, we always get a much better gauge of what the broadcaster sees in a running order um, once we see the songs back to back. Once we do that, maybe some ones that we're a bit iffy on the uh, running order, we're, we're going to go, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So anyway, that is what we think. Let us know what you think in the comments section. If you have a country in the final, are you happy with your position in there? Um, yeah, or are just you like me, who's like really worried and nervous and scared? I think we're, I think every Brit is worried, regardless of where we would have come. So let us let us know. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and catch us up on the next video. Bye. Bye.